Hello, everybody. I think I said hello first. I'm Earl Johnson Bradley, and we welcome you to another round of a lot of fun meetings. These are fun meetings. Well, um, last time we went through this for the 2016-18 Formula 20 recommendation, we had a lot of good give and take, had a lot of um, things that we proposed, some of which some of which did not as always happens in our lives. But at the end of the day, most of us who have to run the community and technical colleges in the state. Understand that we're not going to get uh, life and just like Dr. Perry said a few minutes ago. Getting back to that original state of funding probably will never happen. So if you live your life that way, plan accordingly, you're probably going to be okay and have fewer headaches and fewer attention breaks or whatever. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, with the, and I think the, the tide is changing some in higher education. I think more and more people are beginning to see. The real value, especially of what we do at the community college, because that's always been a big gap as far as I'm concerned. When you talk to the public about community colleges, they very often don't get uh, what happens. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary at Tarrant County College, and I've been on the speaking circuit as much as I could during this, this whole year. And I was at um, um, last Saturday. We had our big to do on the Trinity River. It was just really, 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 really nice. And I talked about some of the things that, that we've done at Tarrant County College. And one very prominent businessman came up to me and he said, I just cannot believe how dumb I've been about Tarrant County College. I had no idea y'all did all this stuff. Now, maybe that's that you do a much better job of that than I do. I don't know. Maybe you never hear uh, that Diane and, and Alamo. I don't know what you hear down there, but. It's hard to educate the public, really, really, really hard, by maintaining the problems that we have. But today, we are charged with uh, going through the agenda, following the commissioner's charge for what we are to do. And I know we're going to look at everything. I really like his invitation for us to think differently about how we go about doing this. Uh, he won't have to escape. Yeah, I made sure to call in here. <laughs> 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 I'm 
great job. Well, we just gave Jeremy another big job. So uh, we'll, let, we'll let Jeremy be. Mark Esamir is one of my children. And <laughs> I, I have to, to raise Mark Esamir. He used to work for me. I don't know if you knew that or not, but that was wonderful. I wouldn't pick on him. But uh, are there nominations from the floor? Any other nominations? If not, hearing none, do you want to clear these two elected by acclamation or do you want to vote? By acclamation, I'll be hearing none and seeing acclamation. Congratulations, Thank you. Dustin. Well, I appreciate that, yes. And yeah. congratulations, Kelly. And know that we appreciate both of you agreeing to do this very wonderful work. And Dusty, I'm going to turn this over to you. I, I was told that I have an option that I could conduct this meeting myself, spirited as I wanted to, or I could let you conduct it, which would be even more spirited. Calm this as I wanted to. So that is all yours. Well, thank you guys and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I think I'll take very seriously, and I know that Kelly will as well. And, uh, Best part of it, it looks like we have less charges than we had last time, so that makes me feel good. Uh, a couple of, of uh, comments before we have our briefing. Roland's good with us. And by the way, I only met Roland about five minutes ago. So this is <laughs> Roland. We'll give him a better introduction in a minute. But I also noticed as I'm looking at the stuff uh, out in the parking lot, that, uh, <laughs> did you get to eat? I did first, yes. I got here a little early. I made really good time with my wife's uh, Dodge Charger. I think we'll move on down the road. But uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six new members, I believe. Uh, so why don't we go around real quickly and introduce ourselves. I know we got a name tag and everything, but tell us, you know, maybe what you do. Mary? Tell Mary uh, Wimblin, the Florida State College Court author, and I'm the Vice President for Finance. Okay, thank you. So Rose. Excuse me, which state college? Uh, Port Arthur, Lamar State oh, College. I thought you said Alamo State. I had you to tell me about that. Uh, Lamar State, got it. Okay. I'm Phil Rose. I'm the Vice President for Research and Effectiveness in IT at McLennan Community College. And Dr. Snyder, I'm the Vice Chancellor for Finance Administration for Alamo Colleges. David, come with us. Kelly Schoemaker, I'm the CFO and Senior Vice President for Finance and Administration for Berlin College. I'm Ed Young, uh, coordinating board staff. I'm the senior director for special projects. I am Roland Gilmore, the program director, supporting this group uh, today. I've already introduced myself, and Jeremy's on the phone. Jeremy, tell us who you are. Yeah, so Jeremy McMillan, president at Grayson College. Thank you. Brad Johnson, president of Northeast Texas Community College. Cam Eglin, president of Paris Junior College. Cesar Vela, Rovero Community College, uh, Control. Mike Rosser, Chancellor at TSTC. Duncan, Vice President of TACC. Stevenson, Vice President of TACC. And Mark Rosen, and Mark, Mark Del Mar. Okay. Well, and one reason I want to point that out is because that I didn't catch the rotation being that significant, but that is a significant number of people that do. That is a wonderful thing yes, it because. Is. Uh, uh, this will be my third round, and the first two rounds were really interesting, uh, to say the least. And so I think some new, fresh looks and fresh approaches to, to maybe some of the same uh, problems were good. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Roland. Tell us more about yourself, Roland, and then you can give us the uh, official overview. Well, there's not a whole lot to tell about myself. I came from the facilities of the coordinating board here that dealt with mostly the facility inventory of the general academics and some of the more uh, herd maintenance reporting, the audits, where most of you may not be familiar with. Uh, as Gary was transitioning me into the service of this group ever since Jim Pinkerton left, and he uh, decides to move on to others, my short-lived uh, transition got accelerated. So I have gone through one legislative session and survived it. So now I'm going to try to survive this formula of funding and through committee. So uh, what I have here uh, today is to kind of give you a brief 
overview of the formula funding and the, the formulas that are involved and what they're what they're particularly uh, associated with. Uh, Gary had presented this back in the last session, and uh, I've changed uh, the dates and different things in this, but uh, I'm going to go through this and hopefully benefit the new members who may not have been associated with it or been exposed to it. Most of you returning members are pretty well familiar with it. So, yes, formulas are allocated, are, are allocations for funds that have been appropriated. Formulas are supposed to equitably uh, allocate available funds amongst the institutions. Uh, funding formulas reflect how the state funds are earned and not how they must be spent. Appropriations are made on a lump sum basis rather than by line item. Institutions may spend their appropriated funds for any legal purpose without regard to the method by which they amount, the amount of funding was generated. Most all of the formula funds for the community colleges are general revenue, and uh, a formula should be fair and equitable, provide adequate funding to support institutions' missions, and provide incentives for institutions to engage in behaviors. It's simple and understandable, and I think out of all of the formulas with all of the groups, these are the most simplest forms that uh, are understanding. And they should be stable and predictable. What are formulas intended to cover? They cover construction, departmental operating expense, academic support, including libraries. They often uh, student services as well as institutional support. A lot of you are familiar with this process. Uh, this particular committee starts the legislative process for the next biennium. So this committee here helps to make recommendations for our commissioner to be approved by our board to be presented Typically, this happens. This committee happens between the August and December of this year, and then February and March is when the recommendations are presented to the Strategic Planning Committee. Around April, the C adopts the formula recommendations. Then, come June 1st, the, the next year, the staff will form uh, the staff forwards the formula recommendations to the LBB or the government. Legislature. Uh, summer, that's that's the beginning of the basis year, and those are the uh, when the new contact hours come out and the new uh, three-year average of the are the successful ones. Sometime in the November December time frame is when we run these formulas using the spring and summer and fall. the three main aspects of the community college funding model. One is the million dollar base funding or the core funding that we typically have by district, which means $50 million. We also have the contact hour or the 90% uh, enrollment based funding based on cost, uh, using the cost based weights. For, uh, during each year we collect all of the expense data and those are the costs, and these are roughly the, the rates that come out of it once we start the formula funding process. We also have 10% of that in the outcomes-based funding or the, the success points, which many of you here pretty much were in on the, uh, the official beginning of that for the community colleges. And uh, these are three basic. They're pretty simple. They're pretty easy to understand. If I can understand them uh, in a short time period, they're, they're, they're pretty easy. Uh, the success point model, I uh, thought I'd go through some of the main areas of the, that are uh, located on. These are milestones or attainments. One is the developmental education and its completion of a developmental ed class or 
reading and writing and math. There's also gateway courses, completion of first college level, English courses. There's also college credit attainment where you, your institution receives points for each student that attains the completion of its first 15 college credits as well as its 30 college credits. These are, these are uh, milestones that are credentials that are awarded. You get uh, points for associate's degrees, certificates, or even bachelor's degree when they're off. Even transferring to a general academic institution produces points for the community college as well. Contact our enrollment formula it covers academic and technical programs and critical field bonus of 10% is still in, in, in this particular part of the formula and it's based on the cost study of 26 different disciplines using per contact hour rates and formula as it is 100% general revenue. That's all I have. So good. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Now my anxiety can relax. Well, in my uh, zeal to get started and jump head first to this, I would look we have some kids to my right. You got to right there, hit yourself. I would appreciate it. All right. I'm trying to work in government. Well, thank you. I apologize for
Miss Oliver with a feather when he said, sure, yeah, we'll do that. And um, so the, the journey began, and we worked with the co-board and the comptroller's office. Uh, the LBB staff was always uh, involved in all of our processes, as was um, the Rabel Center at UT and others who had some input in terms of uh, TWC. The gist of the formula is that uh, when someone attends TSTC, uh, the COBOR captures those students. And then when they leave and go to the workplace, the Workforce Commission captures those students. And when they're then found in the workplace, the co-board compares those two databases and uh, measures their salaries for five years. The average salary is then aggregated together and an economic value for Texas is assigned to it, and then you get paid a, essentially a commission. Well, the economic value that is attributed to their employment status. Sounds complicated, but here's what it really means. Is the more people we place, the more money we get, and the, more, the higher their salary above minimum wage, then the more money we get. If the, if the, if the uh, students go to work for minimum wage, their contribution counts zero in the funding formula. That's how it works. Well, uh, not putting you on the spot, but just because you, I don't know very really much about it as I wish I did. But since this comes to this committee, and since we're going to eventually make some type of recommendation, I think uh, I'll just say I'd like to know is uh, the, the intensity of the, the uh, push for refinement coming from. It's from, the, in the special provisions of the appropriation bill, you will find this language right here that obligates us to constantly refine the formula. That's why the formula is in front of this committee is, and this language has been there for two sessions in a row, and we suspect it'll be there forever, that this committee has an opportunity to do refinements as uh, we see fit. So as a committee, we may have to bone up Whole deal. Or yes, yeah, and, and I will tell you, you probably don't have to get more refined than what I just described to you. But I'll take you into as much detail as you want, and the co-board staff will help us. <laughs> good, good. I love it. It really changed our culture. And the information is readily available. This data that's already Great. collected by the state. Because that's half our challenge. As yeah. a uh, a Fox News junkie who drove five and a half hours. I would nearly liken it to changing from the current tax structure to a flat tax. You, Not, you, your first attempt needs to be neutral, at least, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming it was fairly. No, it wasn't. We lost right? money. Okay. We lost money. It wasn't calibrated correctly to our old trends. Okay. Um, but, um, but our past performance indicates that we should have good sessions in, ahead of us because the lag, if you measure salaries for five years, then there's an inherent lag in the system. Uh, last time we were paid, the first session we were paid on, on the 0506 cohort, this last time we were paid on the 0708 cohort, and next time it will, of course, be the 0910 cohort. We already know that. Of what the form was going to indicate for us. We all know then the legislature uses that as a starting point, not an ending point. Right. We'll see well, what happens. And this but. question, and I'm I'm this question because I've had them for a couple of days after I looked at it, so I don't know very much. And I remember when it was put in, I think it's a great I, I think it's interesting to me, to me personally, I think it's very interesting. And then I may I say this, I ask this next question as much to influence Roland down here as anybody else. And uh, definition of leadership is an opportunity to influence people. Okay? Is we get confused for the first 20 years of my career that this is a funding formula model, when in reality it's simply a distribution model after
after the number has been decided. That's correct. Is yours a distribution model as well? It's just like yours. Okay. So in other words, you have a formula based on these new criteria and new dynamics. At the end of the day, the number is going to come out at the end of the state and that new model is going to distribute. That's right. It's not going to be producing anything. Mm -hmm. no. I'm not aware of that. I, yeah. thought, I really felt yours was producing a number. The reality is it's, it's another way of distributing. It's numbers. distribution. Formula just like just like contact hours. That I did not know. Yeah. Now, so, what what some people put out though is they could they would they argue that this because the formula is not a cost recovery formula, which is what contact hours, is, but instead is an indication of actual economic benefit to the state. There's dollars in the treasury that have been generated that are a clearly linearly analogous to the indicated number, therefore it could be a distribution because the final out the final outcome the state seeks, which is a, a well paid employee, has actually been indicated by the formula. I don't think that'll make any difference in terms of the way that stuff but one could argue that. But so and and go ahead I'm sorry. I mean, how are the students that are being employed out of state? Only 3% of our students go to work out of state. There you go. So, and the answer is we lose them. And so as we come together, and, and I'm not trying to pick on you one or the others, I just think we know the least about this one, is so as we come together a little bit with the subcommittee yes. to have this charge, when we talk in terms of refine the new return value funding formula, there's going to be some suggestions coming from different directions on what that means, what fines mean. Uh, well, I, I, the truth is we had a hand in writing that language, yeah. so I can tell you what it is. It is exactly what I had said, and that is, is continue to review it and make sure that it does what we want it to do. And that's what we're finding. In fact, we made no changes last time. I have a minor tweak this time, and that is we don't get any dual credit shown in the formula yeah. this time. And um, we won't do dual credit that doesn't uh, result in an MSA or more. We don't, and so, uh, and we don't do dual credit that won't that won't uh, actually have an impact in the formula. So we were limited on, on our dual credit. But we would like to get paid for it. Well, I can and tell you right now. now we do. Right now, there's not a way in that model to where there's yeah. a value added. To yeah. We'd like to I'd like the committee to consider the notion of adding that in. Interesting. Yeah. Very. And by the way, the students don't count in our formula if they don't take at least nine hours. So if I teach a onesie twosie class in dual credit, we don't do that anymore because um, we don't get paid for it. Any questions this time? Yes. Oh, uh, so is it is this uh, uh, not funding with uh, the uh, refining that doesn't affect the formula funding? It affects once the number comes out to you. Are you saying that between the technical colleges that it's distributed a certain way based on funding or? I mean, you know, we have LBB staff who is probably way better qualified to answer that question. Because they are, but my understanding, my understanding is, is that the legislature begins consideration of a base bill with large blocks of funds already at a start point for the various budget items in the state budget, and these formula are used to determine which sector gets which start point. I, I don't know if they consider, for example, your technical along with ours, or if, if they look at each one all by themselves. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, if, if all my questions are purely informational, because I, I, I was surprised when I saw 
I was surprised when I saw this one of the charges. You know, you weren't surprised. No, no, I wasn't, yeah, because I knew that language was in the bill. Yeah. The rate study has made recommendations on the treatment of costly based forces and point allocation. Those two, we had that one last uh, time. Uh, very interesting. The, the recommendation was we wait and see what happens down at STC. STC had a uh, pilot uh, program going with cost based education. And, it, and, and when we met two years ago, it was in the infant stage. I also say I don't know where it went or how it turned out or if it's still in infancy stage. That's something we need to find out as we break off in the subcommittee. But uh, we didn't do much with that one other than say we think it's a good idea. Uh, let's wait and see what happens at STC and let's see if there's anything that they do that's wonderful that we want to steal or do we just need to start over. Is that my recommendation as well? Okay. I, you know, I was a little bit. Maybe it's a good word for me on what they were doing. I, I heard the reports and everything else, but it really quite didn't fit in my head with what I think of when I think of comprehensive based education. You the same way, Sam? Well, I didn't. What I heard from the AM Commerce side wasn't what I expected. Yeah. What I envisioned comprehensive based education. Right. Well, that's, that's where I was. And where I got confused last time, to, to, so those of you do not know how confused we were last time on this one, is the STC project was really more about, in my, what I remember, implementing coffee based education, more of the, and, and the funding was a straggler. You know, how they were in the middle of trying to, I mean, we want to do coffee based education. Oh, by the way, we also need to figure out how this is going to, we want to come up with some ways how this meets the form of funding possibilities. It didn't it wasn't even off the ground at that time. It was a way to get a ten thousand dollar degree. Yes. Yes. It was a delivery mechanism, but trying to figure out how to fit that into some type of funding formula and I don't know how I can also say that I don't know what the result was. Well, well there is some there is uh, you know I'm just adding a little bit more information and I'm very knew it at that part of it too, but as I understand it, both the Commerce and the South Texas, or the South Texas has done very well mm -hmm. and correct. It wasn't in its infancy by the last biennium, but I think they've made major strides. And not only that, but there are also, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that the U.S. government now, or the education has authorized three more community colleges for participation as well. Yeah, we have DOE approval okay. on companies to be college credit classes. Austin, yeah. Texas? Yes, the other two are Austin Community College and Dallas Community College. Also, uh, Houston, Houston, I believe, too. Oh, Houston, I believe so. Okay. And South Texas Community College, they started theirs in uh, the spring of 2014. Now, someone that can give us a lot more information, and, and I'm willing to do this, is uh, the folks that are actually working on that, which is Ginger and uh, Judy, who are THECP representatives. So the problem that exists, like you said, is trying to get it into, incorporated into the formula. Well, the way that is, it's course-based, or you know, most of the formula is based around courses, and these don't quite fit into that category because they're not really continuous contact hours, but they're mapped that way in the, in the programs that are currently going on, so we have to find an alternative solution to those modules and incorporate it into the formula funding. So that's a challenge. And that's, this group is actually made up of a lot more other folks that are out in the community college world that are entertaining offices there's a lot more that these folks are going to bring to the table. I just don't know all of that information at this point. But we can have one of those individuals present that. Well, I'm curious, Roland or David, why does the Department of Education have to give its approval for a college to look at companies to make students so that they can get financial aid for it? 
And it's, I can tell you, it's hard to do. It took us a long time. Lots of calls to Washington. Yeah, they don't just relevant. Actually, yeah, SACS was, SACS was 10 times easier than DOE. You know, the students are very interested in the students that are basically using their own personal knowledge, not having to, you know, even in the workforce, coming and saying, well, I can, I can, I can attain this class by the knowledge that I've already got. So they go through modules, integrate. That's about the truth of what I know. Right. So these other folks can give you a lot more answers to any questions that you might have. The question I would have that I feel bad for not having clue to me yet. During the last session, for STC particularly, how their funding was impacted by their ongoing policy. In other words, in some ways, it's not, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking way out, I don't even know. It's not like maybe they, you know, it was company based, but we somehow turned that into a credit hour. And that credit hour was funded.
education is changing and how we deliver is changing. And the contact hour model is as applicable as it was in the past. I mean, and I just laid it out there. Well, my totally naive perception would be that somebody on one side of the room thinks that coffee based deserves less money. Somebody on the other side of the room thinks it deserves more money. And somewhere in between, can they contact our formula? That would be my basic perception. That that's what I think that. And I don't have a clue, personally. And I've had the same arguments I, on my own campus about this and sorry. I could offer from my experience that one of the things that's really important when you have that argument or discussion is to make a distinction between prior learning assessment and C based learning. One contained within the other. In other words, the CBL program will allow you to do uh, prior learning assessment easily. But a lot of C uh, uh, competency based learning includes students who actually move through the material slower. And so um, you have to take great care when you when you say, well, it ought to be cheaper because they can move faster. That what we found in our experience is doing CBL is harder, but it's far more rigorous, and the students truly learn the material. They don't cram and regurgitate. They truly learn. And because done well, it's cumulative. Demonstrate mastery over and over again with through each phase of the learning, and and it's reinforced over and over again. It's just, it's the way we teach things like pilot training, nursing. You have to demonstrate it over and over again that you're, you know all of us are actually doing that now. But the best so. example I have that's probably not even even a real example is I was teaching a class in taking a stone. And if anything's company based learning, the way they've developed, and I was totally shocked at the delivery mechanism that I'm encountering, but I liked it. But I, it's company based, you just keep on progressing. Very interesting. Well, that's going to be it. But coming back to this comment, and this comment, and, and your comment, uh, I think what I, a consensus I see in the room is we may not be the experts on this, but we may have to have a little more help for people who are in the deep. I don't know what else. Uh, I think we're not the experts on that. <laughs> <laughs> and that we do need input from the people who really understand it and are doing it. So, I'm like Pam, competency based, what we call competency based education, which has been around forever and ever and ever. And I don't think anybody has ever thought about giving students financial aid. To, I mean, it was just not a part of the the part of the picture, students came in and they could pass exams that were designed by the faculty members, which you know made it sit well with those faculty members because they actually designed the the, um, the courses that they had to pass, the materials, the tests, or whatever it was. And it was a very simple kind of thing. But now, you know, we've made it into something very different. And so I, I saw when I sat there listening about U.S. government. Uh, and that's, that's a huge you know, hurdle giant. for those that would want to jump into competency based that, that does not have any help to find its way. So we're trying to still have it. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm going to say the years, I'm not always going to say this, it wasn't that long ago when we faced that same challenge with online classes and uh, uh, and then even, even later than that, your Veterans Administration reimbursement for online classes. So, you know, that's kind of finally evolved, and now this is going to be the next thing that has to be rest of the side. That's a simple good analysis. Okay. Right. Right. And then one thing I wanted to add to what Pam's comment was, if we when we moved to charge four, yeah, you could, whether, I don't think we'd want to recommend that we'd want to deal with the legislature following the trail of, of us doing total change. That's kind of the way the charges are structured, I think, with still contact hours, revisiting 
how we might want to do it. Then use that fourth charge uh, that Kelly was talking about on the web here, maybe to try to go after extra money. Because like we said, you know, we get a fixed pool that we get distributed through these formulas. Um, but maybe if we want to go after an equity, some sort of forward funding to deal with the equity concern of 60-30 or, you know, to where we use that charge for to package up some other pitch for funding that is directed to close the gap on something um, that might allow us to kind of build on to the standard formulas that, you know, it's predetermined some dare the pie on what they're going to get each year and we're duking it out among ourselves. Well, let's, let's move to charge four. Remember, you're, this is kind of like a uh, bank show. You're saying you're thinking, which one do I want to be involved in <laughs> as we go through these? So far, we haven't had the easy one. Uh, uh, just not as many. Now, <laughs> uh, study and make recommendations on changes to the funding model that will enable institutions to meet the goals of the key That seems pretty broad to me. It seems pretty broad to you, Mary. It's very broad. Uh, which is what one of your points was, right. is that maybe the goal find something there. Thank you, Go right ahead. And one of the members of the, that compiled that is a retired board member from my college. And uh, I was talking to him about the report the other day, and he said one of the things that we need to know is that There was broad consensus among that group that goals cannot be attained with existing structures and resources. So that message was a bit, um, I, I wouldn't say it, it was in, uh, different than the commissioner's comments today, but that you think about it, about saying, well, could we get back to the good old days, which, by the way, we didn't think were that good when we were there. I, I certainly understand that point, but I think those who spent the time on that plan concluded themselves that the plan could not be attained with existing resources. So I think as we contemplate this fourth charge, perhaps part of our task, not just in this two-year window, but possibly moving forward, is to figure out how to make visible the gap between existing resources uh, the goals of the state. Um, not a defense of status quo, some other means of saying um, these goals are going to require investment here and here. I, uh, to me, presents an interesting challenge. So I'll just throw that out there. That, uh, I think you all agree and all are saying different ways. And I, I can laugh with it. Steve and Don and them and say, you know, I spent five and a half hours drive today telling myself not to editorialize when I got here. But, you know, the thing, I agree with the commissioner said today about the barriers that are faced by the population that we, and, and I don't believe people on campus say that I bother them a lot about how we're going to help with this group of people and these groups of these demographics. And, and I've always going on to own, and let's try something new, let's try something different. But the current funding model doesn't help that. And so when we talked about really changing it, you know, how, uh, I don't know how much we can offer suggestions to actually make it through the system, but if you really want to emphasize uh, certain groups that have certain barriers, you're going to have to change the way you fund those activities. Remember two years ago, one of Irma's good discussions, I, was, I listened, I paid attention, was how uh, a lot of the efforts that were to go in to create completion and retention from the student services or the tutoring, with the one you were on tutoring, and yet in our system of funding, tutoring and student services are, are not really mentioned. They're a piece of the pie somewhere out in that pie. But if we're going to spend more and more, like on my little bitty campus, we've had three positions to deal with whatever you have to do to help the student get in and out. Mm -hmm. That's basically the job. I wrote the job description. You do what you have to do, get them in and get them out. 
Well, we funded that. But we're not going to recoup any of that because that has nothing to do with contact IR, it has nothing to do with maybe it may impact us on student success points later down the road. But we're going to invest in action. So if we're going to follow his comment this morning and that lead into, then, then we are going to have to come up with something in number four that's a little bit out of the normal box that we didn't have. I don't know what that is. I'm not suggesting anything specific. But I think we need to come up with something outside the box on that one. Well, and that's where all of our other funding, you have to wait you know, two years to get it. And as you said, even in those strategies, maybe with some persistence that could help add contact hours or whatever. But bucket four could be somehow sold as board funding for strategies that drive <coughs> your point. It would be a hard sell because what are you going to anchor it to? But I think it would be remarkably different than the wait two years to get some money for something we didn't win um, that drives to a goal. Yeah. Well, and I am. Uh, you're exactly right. I agree with you. And, and that, to me, gives us, you know, that, that subcommittee, I hope, uh, ends up having some things that catch us all off guard when they come back and talk to us. Uh, I don't know if you can you hear me. I, I do. I'm glad you talked up. I forgot you was there. Say something. Yeah. Well, um, I've I've gone back and looked over the charges not just for our committee, uh, but also for the university committee, and right academic. And it seems to me that community colleges have something to offer them their charge too relative to success points and performance funding. Uh, I know that our um, our is a footnote in their in their packet, and so I think that's a good thing. And as well as what other states have done, we have some experience that we might be able to share with them. It seems to me really uh, charge three is a uh, probably the first. It, it's kind of a subcomponent of charge four in in some ways, but both charge three and charge four are present in the university side of this. And we've talked with our success points. Wouldn't it be nice for transfer and for for the goals of 60 uh, by 30 um, goals that we have to have some similarities, perhaps in in our in our um, our approaches? The more different, the the more difficult it becomes. Uh, and I don't know the functioning of the committee and the opportunity to have some things that that are similar. Um, across the charges, and, and so can you talk about that a little bit? As, as I'm a new committee member, uh, so there's a statement in there, but just really a question of how does this committee function? Yes. I'm going to, with, with all uh, due respect to Pam, who you said he was tired of hearing it's always been done this way. I think it's always been done this way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that I, I don't probably have two sessions. To to go back to, and I don't know that we've ever an expectation or uh, a charge, or not even a charge. I don't think there's been a whole lot of work between the three different committees, uh, to be honest. I'm not saying that. I think it's a great suggestion, especially when you point out uh, that two of the charges are extremely and that we ought to be working on. So I think that would be something outside the box a bit that we could propose. Uh, as we find or as we get into those, maybe we could interact with the other committees to see if there could be. Because we're saying is a good point. I think I hear you saying there ought to be, some, in your opinion, there ought to be some consistency. Yeah, I mean, why invent two different systems um, for you know for a press? Uh, so. I agree. I agree. Well, that's a good. Discussion, in my opinion, but let's open the floor and see if there's any other discussion that someone wants to throw out that uh, we uh, stimulated your thinking while we're having it. One of the things we talked about last year, that we said we would work on at the community college level, was a way for us to quantify all of the great work we do with um, non-credit courses that are not recognized by the coordinating board for, for funding. And the answer that we got back, if you recall, was not that the coordinating board did not want to oblige us. It was that we don't know how to count it. We don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, you take 
a large number of students who come to us looking for way out to do this, that, or the other. Of course, I mean, the easy answer is we tack on some more contact and, and pull them that way and put them in a pathway, which is something we haven't done, I don't think, on a regular and consistent basis that was done well enough to get the attention of the legislative body, at least. Now, if, if, and I'll give you, for instance, somebody comes through and they're taking a adult basic education course and they finish it they with flying colors and they go over and take yeah, one course or two courses and something that they've always wanted to do and they're good at it already. So kind of like already have prior learning experience, so they go in and get that. And that's all they get. They leave. Well, we know who they are, we know where they go very often, and we have no way to capture that. And that's just money that we're spending, and we are capturing any reimbursement for it. And in many, many, many cases, we're certainly adding to the economic value that these students take back to the workplace and our community. We said we've worked on that, but we haven't done anything with it. Something that popped in my head while you were talking is, should we be positioning that the same formula that the technical college is doing on placement and connection to the workforce and the values community for the non-credit side? Because that might be a way to kind of start bringing that together because the community college will have both of those elements. Uh, uh, I think for those kinds of, of uh, outcomes, it would be well suited. Mm -hmm. It's not well suited to a comprehensive community college, right, no. as you obviously know. But it may be some but area to look at that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, think, I think it would well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And, and as a college that's on the border and the, the fact that data doesn't exist for outside of the state, that becomes a concern for a number of us. Pam is there and, um, uh, well, Dusty, you have the same issue. Uh, the, the material, the data that would be needed to support us equitably across the state would be difficult in that situation. I think it's an admirable approach in trying to get there. It's just um, a difficult thing. You're talking specifically about the non credit part of that. Uh, what I heard said was that maybe we could look at the uh, model that TSTC is using and apply that to us. And the same issue still exists, I think, on our success points that we had that issue with the transfer numbers not being right. fully complete. I don't know where that is. I know it's something we're wrestling. Well, I'm saying the National Clearinghouse is being utilized to help solve some of that issue for the credit side. Yes, that, that issue was resolved on the credit side, yes. Um, my question. Fairly, my caution would be, uh, as much as I like that idea, my caution would be that it, it, it's just one more piece to the distribution model. It's just another way of distributing things. Yeah. Dividing it by one more number. Yeah, that'd be my caution. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's pretty much complicating it further. You're not going to get any more money. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to about this caution. It makes sense. What should produce the number? Here are the pieces of the pie that should produce the number. But we turn around and say these are simply ways that this number is going to be distributed. Is it worth the trust? Yeah. 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 Well, it's even beyond worth the trouble. It becomes problematic when those two pots may not be equivalent in terms yeah. of their, how critical they are to our mission. So if you had to choose, very well do one right. we're splitting funding uh, into another area. When you choose, what do you mean? Well, to be silly about it, and I know nobody's talking about this, but just to quickly make the point, they're saying that we're going to split pot from the state between uh, dog grooming and English literature. It would be better to leave dog grooming completely. 
completely out of the picture because English literature is far more significant to our overall educational mission. And so put dog grooming into the pot creates a very different um, outcome in terms of scarce resources. That's all. Well, I guess, I understand your point. I don't disagree with it when you're talking about, um, you know, adult basic education students. However, I do think that perhaps just the best that we leave it alone <laughs> and start talking more about pathways that meet the requirements for funding. Uh, um, that's one of the things I'm working on right now at the college. Well, it, it, that's a big hurdle too, but that if we do that, we don't have to worry about not getting the money. It will be We should have, you know, uh, there is garbage now, and this otherwise comes from through my head, other than I had uh, my deep instruction and two of the division chairs spent hours trying to explain to me about a year ago that, you know, there are some funding mechanisms for what's called non force space you know, and that took forever to come up with how do you find an enforced value for mediation opportunity, NCBO, you know, opportunity, that's what it is. And so that might be another piece of the thing, too. Well, we the latest, our next thing is to, uh, uh, after discussing charges, is to uh, come up with some sub subcommittees and talk about the future. So basically, we've got four subcommittees. And in the most politically palpable process we could have, we would like to have at least a chair to those subcommittees and uh, want at least two members to those subcommittees. And to do that, you might serve on more than one subcommittee to accomplish that. But, that's a, and, but we're not limiting. I'm not limiting to three. I'm saying I'd like to see that as minimum. But if there's something you're really interested in, Feel free to throw your name in the hat and uh, we'll go from there. So, go back to grade school. Who wants to be on? Uh, who <laughs> wants to chair number one? The uh, contact our for student success fund. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. What's hard for me is because number four is so tied to the flip side of number one, mm -hmm. and because I want to be on number four, then it's saying I'm being totally yeah. silent on number one, which is probably a lot of the other people in the room that might be in the same boat. So I don't know if we want to join those two since they're complimentary. Yeah, so I was just saying anything that four may recommend. It has to work on one. And one has a lot that we've already done in prior years, other than fighting for the same right. grade again right. on student success points or well, tell our story differently. Well, very articulated in the last two years. And then four is where we try to make it different. Yeah. So to those charges right. could maybe go as to Gary and one of these tasks. Jeremy, catch all that? I did. Okay. So I see nobody uh, who wins that, so what we're now looking for is a chairman to the committee that's going to look at charge one and four, the subcommittee on one and four. Why don't you see who all wants to work on this? <laughs> then let them iron it out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who would like to work on that committee, and then we'll figure out who's going to be the chairman. Committee, subcommittee on one and four. Okay. First name. See, I'm assuming that people are raising their hands and you're writing things down. Jeremy, I apologize. So far, I have four people. And uh, Pam, Diane, Bill. No, say so. Say so. I may not be on that list, but I'm, I'm actually new to the team. Right. They, they have not they. No wonder I was well, no wonder uh, I you are, out of there. I couldn't update those, but yeah. I do have you on okay. the official list. You'll see my, you'll see my confusion on the Cesar. Okay. Well, 
Dusty, I have interest in that since there's others to cover the chair roll now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I'm going to put you on there. So we have five people, so that works out to two and a half people per charge. Right. Oh, one, two, it's three, a, four, five, six, six, I have Mary, Mary, you want on there? One, two, three, yeah, four, but five. there's two. I mean, I can do something else. No, nope. we're going to get you. Five, it's, more it's, a big, yeah. it's a big one. Okay. Because that was... Everybody has been talking about the interrelation between those two and the, the giving and all that good stuff, so it would be interesting to address them that way, I think. So, uh, so I think Mary's on there. Mary, Pam, Diane, Phil, Cesar, Jeremy, and Mary. Jeremy's at a distinct disadvantage. <laughs> Jeremy, you want to chair? No, no, no. <laughs> I nominate Pam. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pam. And I'm feeling you have a very interested group, so I'm not going to have any trouble there. Then that goes to uh, number two, which I think has an obvious chair of mine. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Would anybody disagree with that? <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, the question will become would anybody volunteer to be on that committee? <laughs> I volunteer. I'm interested in learning more Brad about will it. volunteer. Oh, really? And I'll okay. tell you what, I will volunteer for a certain reason, uh, only because I, I think I should know more about how that works. Uh, now, I just want to warn you guys, our meetings are going to be held at the Texas Chili Parlor. All right. Good. Wow. I'm just, all for it. just want to make sure you know before you that. sign up. Okay. That's good. Anybody want to join in on uh, Chili Parlor? Yeah. How does it work if you're on two committees? Like, I really would like to. But I guess we disseminate yeah, information. Yeah, I want to be. It works wonderfully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you do twice as much work. Yeah. You uh you make sure they don't meet at the same time. So you can go to both meetings. And most of we got this most of the interaction is email. Or have been the past, yeah. Been by email and then generally like once the dinner we're gonna talk about when we want to meet down here again in person. And a lot of committees try to get here an hour and a half that and have their subcommittee meeting for the big meeting. So it would uh, save more travel. I'd love to be on the okay. committee. Very appreciate that. Thank you. And then number three, composite based. All right. Mark needs to be Mark on that one too. <laughs> Mark, we're going to put Mark on there. That's right. We can't leave Mark out. <laughs> we need all of them. We need all of them. We need all of them. on there, too. And yeah. they, but they can choose to be on two committees also when they when we hear from them. He's also a professor at ACC, so. Who's that? Oh, uh, David. Okay. Good. Good. So we have Michael Irma, Mark, David. I'm not How do I leave you off there? You have a choice. Just pick one. Your choice. Um, what, where do you? Uh, probably the one in four. One in four? I think that's just correct. Your choice. So that one would probably be lots of perspectives. Yeah. Lots of perspectives. Okay. So, on one more. We don't. We do not. Thank you, sir. Michael, Irma, Mark, David. Everyone's represented. Anybody else uh, want it on that committee by chance? Okay. Uh, Mark and David are here to speak for themselves. Mike's already the chairman of one. I know we said we probably asked uh, David. David, yeah, we've got him on there. He's a professor. Mm -hmm. Oh, he said that. Yeah, he's new too, so. Well, he's new. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, but that's just one guy. And uh, what well, uh, the that somebody threw out? The 11th? The 11th. Talking about the 11th of September. The 11th only extends it way. Why not just have it on the 10th? The 10th actually works better for me. If you do it on the 10th, three, three of us have a meeting here at the co board that conflicts with 11 o'clock. Oh, so y'all can keep it one if I'm the only one missing. So, I mean, yeah, and we can still figure it out. Yeah, that's 
I'm I'm not opposed to that. What, what, what do you think? You're not opposed, are you? I'm not opposed. Okay. I mean, <laughs> but, as long as the work gets that, done, one way or another. That's what I want to go. What if we, uh, and uh, Jeremy, that impacts you. That's fine. But that means that there'll be a lot of email interaction with you. There was a lot of time for phone calls, emails between now and the 8th, and then we would expect, uh, you know, good, uh, strong, strong, solid, yeah, <laughs> solid, thank you, you know, the word. Positive, ready to uh, recommend, you know, discussion, discussion and points no for other discussion on the 8th, not just come down here and say, well, we haven't done anything yet. We really expect the 8th to have something done, okay? I have a question about the committee's operation. The subcommittees, we can do a conference call. Does yeah. it need to be recorded or anything? Conference calls, yes. Okay. Uh, bring this to uh, what? November 5th. November, 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 what's the record date, November 5th? November 5th. So we feel like we're able to do that. We just said 11 o'clock. Moving it to 11 o'clock, I, I, I have to confirm that just to make sure that it's available. November 5th? November 5th and 11th? Okay. That one's a little too easy right now. Well, one. I may miss all of them. Oh, and 11th. 11th. Yes, 11th. 11th. The 8th and the 5th were 11th. Right. So you want to move November 5th's meeting to 11th? Yes, sir. If, if we can, I guess we can check that out. I will check it out. Yeah. Good. And then what's the date of these symbols? The third. First Thursday. Well, no, I really got two first and third. There was a reason for it. I can't think of it. They're both Thursdays. <laughs> well, we're not coming both of those days. They, they can't, they, they can't they be both Thursdays. You want to do it. These are third. Good. Yeah, these two are third. He's not coming either. Right? Like both days. Like both days. You're on the, the CTCL C committee. Um, I think we have a meeting that day too. I have it. I'm confused on my calendar. It shows on the fourth, but the email says the third, and so we would have to move that one back to the one o'clock. Some of you may want to confirm that. What's always back to you? Is that my right here? Yeah, that's the class. Oh, you're fine. When do you finish your new That day. They may cancel the last class. Okay. So what, what Jeremy is asking there is if December 3rd could be a one due to the other committee that we're talking about. That's certainly people. Like and last year we didn't even have December. We didn't do we finished in November and right. did an email. Let's, let's do it at one. Let's have a goal of uh, being so efficient and effective that we won't need that meeting. Okay. 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 So the no change in the December 3rd. No change. Okay. 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 It is unchanged. I think January is there just in case we need it for the right. final okay. work recommendation. Uh, so. And you can it all the way down, right? Oh, uh, once I with the minutes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The. Uh, At our September 10th meeting, do we want anyone outside of these groups to come and tell us something? Uh, the one they were canceling. We're not having September. Oh, October 8th, I'm sorry. Uh, we talked, you know, in our, you know, do we need more discussion on the 60 by 30 plan? Do we want to try to get somebody here, those of you that are working on that committee, if uh, someone who we think share with us more about consultation. Uh, Why don't you let the committee work yeah. through that? Yeah. And let the committee decide. Okay. Just, just, just let me know. Just let me know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to hit it by 30 places. Right. I just want to make sure we have to have some time to have to get a presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we probably want a group that is working with competency base to give us something to so I will with Ginger as well. That may be the group I was thinking about. I think there's two of them that, yeah. that, that is pertinent, and that's the 
obviously the new plan and the common sea base, what others are doing out there. We would hurt to have those two maybe thinking in terms of October 8th. And, and I can, do, I can and arrange that and make sure. Yeah. And then we can also... Once I confirm the time frame. And then the subcommittee, if you have someone you stir up that you think we need to hear more from, we can try to get them on that day as well. Okay. We're canceling the September 10th meeting. Yes, sir. October 8th is being moved to 11 a.m. versus 1. Yes, sir. And that's when we're going to try to schedule the competency base and the plan presentation. Yes, November 5th is 11 a.m. Uh, December 3rd is at 1 p.m. No change. And for 7th, 2016, states at 1 p.m. no change. Is that it? Yep. Anything else anybody would like to bring to the group today? Uh, Brad, Jervis, Irma Sankey. Everybody opposed, we will be adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you Let's all. Go forth and do good.